Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week I'm taking a look at a great little pump for versatile and affordable PCP filling. But before that, I'm heading out after dark to deal with some farmyard rats. Right, as you can probably guess from what's around me, I'm out on the farm tonight and I'm going to be targeting rats. Now, I really enjoy ratting with night vision gear. Obviously, it's doing a really good service for farmers who need to, need to control these pests, but also it can just provide some really hectic after dark sport. Um, the gun that I've got for tonight is the Wolver Rotex RM8, 177 calibre sub 12 foot pounds, which is just perfect for using around farm buildings. It's also a really nice robust gun and I'm not too afraid of knocking this gun about a bit. Um, the infrared night vision unit is the Sightmark Wraith. I've been using that a lot over the past few months and I've got on really, really well with it. Um, one thing probably worth noting tonight is the fact that obviously the Wraith's got a Picatinny type mount and the rails on the RM8 are dovetail. So I've got some sports match adapters that just convert the, the dovetail rails over to Picatinny. Um, gives me a nice solid connection. The only slight compromise is that it does raise the scope up a bit. Now a couple of things there, obviously it's going to affect hold over and hold under, but I've done plenty of practice on the range, so I'm familiar with that. Also, being a bit higher, it's going to lift my face off of the cheek piece a bit, but I'm shooting off of sticks, it's not going to make that much difference. Um, planning quite a long session tonight if things go to plan. So I've also got Sightmark's external power bank, which very conveniently clips onto the Picatinny rail on the underside of the rm 8 stock. And that will just increase my runtime significantly over using the batteries um, in the Sightmark Wraith. Um, I think that's most of the kit covered. It's already dark. We've heard rats moving, they're squeaking and scratching around. So I'm going to get settled in, hopefully shoot a few. really funny how all the action can sometimes come in the same spot now. I've been here for about half an hour now and the only rats I've seen, considering how ratty it looks all around here, have been um, at the base of a gate where there's some spilt feed. This is a point that I state quite frequently, but it's worth stating again. You can see the light from the Wraith's infrared illuminator because we are using a night vision camera. It is virtually invisible to the naked eye and the rats certainly aren't aware of it. A 
that's more like it. Went through a bit of a quiet spell after the first few, but they do seem to be back on the move now. After a long spell with very little activity from the rats, I decide to have a walk around to see if there are any abate anywhere else on the farm. After a quick look round, it appears that there's not much happening anywhere else, so I return to the original spot and hope for a change in fortunes. Well that was very strange. It went completely dead for a while to the point that we've actually got up, had a look round to see if there's anywhere that looks more promising. Couldn't really find anywhere obvious. So we've settled back in here, started to get some shots and also we're seeing and hearing more rats on the move now, more squeaking, more of that scratching in the, in the hay bales and around us. So I think we've made the right decision. yet another one from under those pallets then. Now, it's a point I make quite frequently is that rats seem to absolutely love hiding underneath pallets. And presumably it's just because they think that they're safe from predators when they're under there. Now, obviously you can often still thread a pellet through. Um, it really does seem like the rats are on the move now. So I'm hoping we're gonna get a chance to really build the bag.
we had a bit of a flurry. It picked up, but it does seem to be slowing down again now. Um, it's really funny how the action does seem to pick up and then you have another lull. Another thing that's peculiar is how you get certain areas that can be really productive and then they completely die off. Um, the area that gave us the first few shots around that gate where the spilt feed is, that's just been dead as a dodo for the rest of this evening, um, whereas we're getting quite a few rats around those pallets still. Well, that's going to be the last one. Most of the shots I've had this evening have probably been between just sort of 10 and 16 metres. That one was a bit further at over 20, so I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. Um, I've had a long, long day at work and I'm feeling absolutely shattered, but it's been a really enjoyable session. Um, apart from being exhausted, I've also noticed that the the illuminator through, through the scope, it looks like the illuminator is starting to flicker and I've got a feeling that the battery is just on the brink of going on that one. Um, like I say though, it's been, it's been a brilliant session. I'm going to get these rats picked up, then I'm going to head for home for some much needed sleep. A hunting we will go. Another great night's ratting there and another great performance for the Sightmark Wraith. Next up, I'm taking a look at the Air Force One Econo Pump from the shooting party. Manual air gun pumps like this are enjoying a real surge in popularity at the moment. Now their affordability and versatility has always been a real plus point, but the fact that they cut out your reliance on other people for refilling your air gun has really come to the fore during the recent lockdowns. Now when shops with bottle filling facilities were forced to close, air gun shooters with a pump like this were able to carry on shooting their PCPs while others had to stop because they simply couldn't fill them up. This is the Econo Pump from Air Force One, which has been made specifically for air gun use. It's extremely sturdy, easy to use, and can fill to 300 bar. It's available from the shooting party for just 99 pounds. Now that is extremely good value for air gun filling wherever and whenever you need it. The Econo Pump needs to be assembled when you receive it. It's a very straightforward job and it comes with really easy to follow instructions. All you need to do is fit the gauge, the hose and the handle, which should take about two minutes. Now everything you need is supplied in the box, including a spanner to tighten everything up. Also in the kit is some oil to keep the pump running smoothly and spares for very simple maintenance. Now the supplied micro bore hose is very flexible and it has an anti-kink wire cage. Now on the end of that is a foster connector for very quick connection of your filler probes and it even comes with a plug to keep dust and dirt out when it's not in use. The last thing you want is muck getting into your air gun's internals and furring them up. Now although it's fairly simple in design, this pump does actually feature a particle filter that's housed just behind the connector. 
Now there are spare filters supplied so you can change them periodically to ensure that no dirt gets into your air gun's internals. The powder coated foot plates are hinged so they can fold flat for compact transportation. Fold them back out and they create a wide area for your feet to keep the pump pinned firmly to the ground while you're using it. Handles on affordable air gun pumps can be quite harsh and that can result in blisters. Now there has been no corner cutting in the design and manufacture of the T-bar handle on this model though. It's very grippy so there's plenty of purchase there but the soft rubber material is comfy and kind to your hands. This pump has been designed to be quick and easy to use and my advice to anyone using a pump like this is to use the full length of the stroke and use your body weight to compress it. Now it's also a really good idea to go for quick top up fills rather than running your gun right down to empty. Now after getting it up to the pressure within the gun it took me 45 strokes and about 40 seconds to fill my Air Arms S510 from 150 bar to 190 bar. Once you reach the pressure you need, which will be clearly displayed on the gauge, which even glows in the dark, slacken off the bleed screw to decompress the hose and you're ready to disconnect from your gun. Now, apart from always being ready for use, this pump is also very compact and easy to transport. I know lots of shooters, even those who have cylinders or compressors, who keep a pump like this in the boot of their car so they know they will never run out of air either on the range or in the field. So that's the Air Force One Econo Pump from the shooting party. It is incredibly solidly constructed, easy to assemble and very easy to operate. It even comes supplied with spares to keep it running in tip top condition. Now it is simply a great solution for PCP shooters who want an affordable, and reliable filling solution for their air guns. And if you still want a cylinder or even a compressor, the shooting party sells them too. I'm afraid that's all we have time for in this week's episode, but as ever, we'll be back again in a fortnight with even more air gun action. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits that you could be taking advantage of through air gun membership. Don't miss the award winning Air Gun Shooter magazine. It's packed with hunting features, reviews, tactics and insight to help you become an even more successful shooter. Get your copy today in shops or online.